morning folks it is wednesday the 2nd of september about 25 to 9 in the morning so i'm just i'm on my second cup of tea i've pegged washing out i'm gonna get the kids down shortly to give them breakfast so then i can get on with work i start work at half nine but i usually log in a bit earlier um depending on what's going on uh this time tomorrow jack will be at school uh he starts at 8 40. we've staggered the time so that each year group goes in you know differently different sides of school and things like that so everyone's in and out at different times and hopefully no cross contamination things like that so this morning it's his pile of stuff here this is um we've dug out all the work he did at home with me um there's a lot and he was really like quite proud looking through it all and seeing what he'd done and remembering stuff and saying oh yeah i remember this i'm like hey, it wasn't quite as fun when we were doing it but it's good to have and uh, we watched a video this morning from his new teacher just going through what they'll be doing and i think the first stint back at school the first half term or whatever they will be focusing on checking through what they that they're comfortable with the year three learning and things like that so um hopefully that work will um stand him in good stead we'll hook there because i put it here and i forget it's there i was looking for it the other day and it's behind my ear um so yeah i've got to quickly run the iron over his school trousers today make sure everything's labeled get his pe kit packed we're going to go out, I think, after work and look for some sandwich bags, uh, some paper, like lunch bags. Because he's got a lunch bag, proper one, like an insulated one. But they can't take them to school at the minute. They want, like, single-use ones. And if possible, they want recyclable um, single-use ones, not plastic. But if I can't find them, um, plastic it will be until I can get hold of some. Um... I think it was, was it Rosina from Scenes and Roger? Hi. Um, who said we've made such like strides into reusable and everyone's so used to having, uh, you know, sustainable products and, you know, their own bags and things like that. And because of the virus, we've all had to revert to single use, you know, disposable stuff you know, disposable bags. Tobin was taking a carrier bag to school and his, his lunch in a carrier bag and it all had to be binned at the end of the day, um, which is a bit a bit sad. But um, So yeah, Jack feels quite confident about school and quite happy about it, so good. He enjoyed his swimming. Loads. I was very surprised. Um, but there was only three of them in the class, so obviously a lot of parents have decided... Well, it could be that they've decided they don't want the kids back swimming yet, or it could be that they're on the last bit of school holiday and making the most of it. So it's we'll see how it goes the next couple of weeks, whether it picks up. Um, we'll perhaps take our masks next week and see if we can stand in there. Because um, there were people watching, but Tobin hadn't brought his mask, so uh, I've got mine with me, but um, he hadn't got his. So I was like, no, we'll go for a walk around the park, it's much nicer. And he grumbled all the way around the park. And then his friend rang him. And they were up trying to put together some half-baked plan all the time while he's using, it, using his data. They don't, like, ring each other using the minutes or whatever. They ring on WhatsApp using the data, which is fine when he's at home. But I tell him when his phone rings when he's out. I'm like, no, ring them on your minutes. You get, like, he's got plenty of minutes. I don't even know if he's unlimited. He might be. Four minutes not talked about crochet so sorry um i am just doing the base of a star stitch so i think next round is two half double crochets in the eye of each star stitch i think i'm nearly done uh, where's yeah but i've got that much to go so another 20 or so star stitches and i'll be back and then that's another um, another 676 stitch round. 
getting there. I don't know what we go on to after that. Where's my pattern? There's my dog-eared pattern. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know, slip stitch too, it looks like. Lots of single crochets. Sorry, I'm reading this room. Um, fan stitches and stuff after that. Yeah. So, like I say, I've got, I think I'm right at the end. Right at the end of this eighth ball. So I've got two more after this and we'll see how far we get. And then it will be washed and sent off to my friend Serbia. The only problem with this yarn is it gets all fluffy on my t-shirt. I've just pegged one of my t-shirts out and it's covered in fluff. I'm like, eh, I'll have to um, get some tape on it or if I was posh <laughs> or organised, I'd have a lint roller, but I'm not, so I wrap sellotape around my hand and do that. That was, we used to have, uh, when I was a kid, we had at minimum four cats at a time. At one point we had four cats, four dogs, two rabbits, two rats, two budgies, everything, everything. Uh, my mum worked at a vet's, um, cleaning after hours and stuff, and she had a way of picking up strays and animals that didn't, you know, weren't gonna, weren't gonna go home sort of thing. Um, we had a massive fat cat called Kizzy and she got so big she couldn't clean herself and the owner's husband said she's not coming I don't want to back put her down but other than being a big lady um, and she, I think she got a bit she needed cleaning up because she couldn't clean herself properly I won't go into more detail than that but um, she was healthy just needed to go on a diet so she came to live with us and if she sat on you, you weren't getting up. <laughs> she was properly like a big, heavy cat. Uh, we had her for a couple of years, I think. Uh, she she was never slim, but she she lost some weight, so she wasn't, you know, um, she could look after herself and keep herself clean and things like that. So, yeah, she was funny. She used to help us wrap presents. She, she could hold paper down. <laughs> She'd just come and sit down on things or on you. She was brilliant. Um, but we had my my cat Poppy uh, was long haired. If if you've been with me for years, we had a long haired cat when we lived at Paul's dad's house um, called Archie. It was Paul's dad and sister's cat. But when he moved out and we took over the house, Archie stayed there rather than moving him or anything. Um, and he had long hair and he look he looks just like my Poppy. I think we got her from the RSPCA. Um, like rescued her, but she just just like Archie, it was fur everywhere. Um, and then we had a white cat called Polo. She lived for, she's not, I think she's only died a couple of years ago and I, I've been out of home for 20 some years. She was a very old cat, um, but she's uh, she was deaf. Um, but she was pure white and she she was so friendly. But can you imagine a goth with a pure white cat that molts everywhere? I was like, I love you, but don't touch me. Don't <laughs> pet her from a distance. <laughs> I'm like, please don't get white hair all over all of my black clothes. So yeah, wrapping your hands in sellotape and frantically patting yourself down was a way of life. Um, yeah, I've gone off on a tangent, so sorry. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plod on, do a little bit more, finish this star stitch row. Or finish the base of the star stitch row. Um, then get the kids and feed them and get on with some work. Well, it was really busy, even though I'd got ahead. I'm going to leave it here before I get into anything else. Um, take care and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye, guys.